Hi. Um, well, it's interesting uh, learning these new technological um, tricks. <laughs> um, hopefully that process worked well for everybody. Um, it'll take, you'll get better and better at this over time, of course, um, doing the breakout groups and working out these different platforms, but um, it's all part of the learning. And thank you for your, um, yeah, um, your participation and preparedness to, to try it out. So I was in um, Daniel's breakout group and unfortunately we couldn't hear Daniel speak. Um, we could see him um, on his video, but we couldn't hear him speak. So Martha and Felicia uh, facilitated our conversation. Um, and um, what we'll do now is um, open the floor up to the wider group discussions so that um, we'll hear from everybody in turn from the smaller groups and then perhaps if anyone from the wider group would like to share to you know to raise your hand um, on the control panel and we will unmute you and we'd welcome hearing um, from as many of you as possible um, just your thoughts and impressions from this group discussion. Well, can I speak? Um, this is Martin. I would like to re report from our group that it was wonderful. And uh, we can summarize what we ex experienced in our group with, this, with what one of our contributors said, which was to enter the fifth kingdom. Oh, this was someone asked, well, what do you do practically once you have all these wonderful ideas? Everyone knows these ideas if you've been studying the teachings for a few decades. Uh, but how do you make it practical? And the practical solution that was offered for all of us is open your heart. And the way that came across best was it said, if you open the heart of love, that is what is resonant to the heart of the planet, which is the hierarchy. And so you open your heart and walk through the door. It's as easy as that. There's no dweller or anything in the way. So <laughs> I thought I'd share that. So open the heart uh, of love. Sure. And we open the heart to the planet. That's right. And Beautiful. It's, love, it's a love to love connection. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hi, Claire. Daniel, can you hear me? Yes, Daniel, we can. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was a little. It was a shame that um, the small group couldn't hear me um, through the Zoom connection. Uh, I'd just like to pick up on on the previous comment. Uh, how do you make this real? And so there's there's a, there's a two-way process, and we're very focused on on aligning with the soul and integrating with the soul, and, and that movement towards the soul. Um, but then the manifestation of the plan has to go in the other direction, and and that that involves the pre precipitation of the soul idea through to the physical plane, um, and that's what what I was trying to um, explain a little bit in in a limited number of words. How you how you can precipitate that down through the physical plane, plane, plane and and the the process of being present, um, which is something that Dot uh, emphasised um, quite a bit, is very important to that process to really be able to, to be present and to really be able to penetrate into the soul idea, and to then bring it bring it down through the mental, emotional, um, right down into into the physical brain, so then it can express outwards horizontally into, into the physical um, into, into the physical world in, in terms of service on the physical plane. Um, so that's what one thing I, I, I wanted to say. Then the other thing I wanted to pick up on was um, the aspect of relationship, because we talk a lot about our, our relationship um, with people and things in the outer world. Um, but for that to be really effective and for that to be really deep, because we have to acknowledge that there's a depth to, to relationships, they can be very superficial, or they can penetrate right from soul to, uh, soul, to soul uh, at its deepest point. Um, but to to have that depth of penetration, uh, we also need to have uh, the right relationship within our own system. So, and and I think it was Nancy who talked about the integration and the alignment, and that whole whole process. Because if your bodies aren't integrated and aligned with soul purpose, you can't precipitate all the way through um, into the brain and, and then it's very difficult also if you don't have 
um, the right relationship between your own the aspects within your own system. It's very hard then to demonstrate right relationship uh, in the outer world. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that too. And then perhaps the last point, because it, it came out of our discussion in the call, is really, um, there's was, there was a question, well, how does love relate to the etheric body? And I thought I'd just pick up on that. Um, so we, we know that the etheric body has seven major centers, and one of those centers is the heart center. And I also mentioned that, you know, if the heart center is closed and inactive, you can have as much love energy, buddhic energy coming down, uh, but it won't, it, 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 the, there's nothing there to respond to it. So as, as part of the whole movement to, to, to soul awakening, that, that heart center needs to be made active. It needs to be open so that when buddhic energy, which is there all the time, it's a point that Dot mentioned, everything is there all the time and we're just trying to awaken to what already is. Uh, but we have to open that heart center so that it can respond to the buddhic energy coming in, which then can flow through the, the physical person and, and out into, into the world. So, you know, the, the seven major centers essentially relate to the seven planes or the seven areas of consciousness in our system. And it's really a question of which of those centers are active and, and, and therefore uh, responsive to, to the energies above it uh, and then drawing it into, into the etheric body and then affecting everything that's physical and going out um, in the physical plane. Um, so, it's the awakening of the heart, and we've talked a lot about love, and it really is about that um, awakening the heart center so that, that love can, can pour into the etheric body and begin to control that, the man on the physical plane, so to speak. That was beautiful. So our group. Go ahead, so our group. Yep, our group uh, came away with more questions than we did um, insights or answers. And Martin, do you want to share? Well, um, we we wonder, for example, up to which point are we as humanity nowadays aware of uh, our telepathic uh, interaction? That was one of our, one of the questions, and. Uh, we also discussed uh, around the question of how can we be more effective servers if we uh, train ourselves as a group, as individuals, in telepathy. Uh, taking telepathy perhaps not so much as a, a, as a faculty or something to be developed, but, but as a way to have a, a fine tuning uh, with, the, with the subtle planes, so as to be uh, channeling it with service. So those were one of the questions. Uh, also, uh, one, of, one of the those persons said that telepathy is uh, being connected to everything via uh, the etheric plane. Anyone want to add something? Yeah, thank you. Rebecca, did you want to add anything? Um... So we we talked we also talked about how, how to become aware of the how to sense the etheric a bit more and um, Linda actually gave the idea that we we're using all the external um, manifestations of the etheric that the technologies that work through the etheric such as the internet and you know um, smartphones and everything all the time. So um, perhaps one way that we can become more aware of the etheric is to be conscious that we're using it in this way constantly. Um, yeah, and and I suppose that fits in with the idea that <laughs> we're all in connection all the time. You know, all these um, waves are going through the atmosphere and we, we're not even aware of them and yet there they manifest in these um, communications such as we're having now um, which is a um, kind of um, precipitation of the, the way the etheric works. I'd like to add here something that Keisha brought forward in our discussion group in Daniel's breakout. She talked about um, the sensitivity that we need to develop in order to 
be in soul alignment and, and therefore responsive to hierarchies, impressions and invitations. So we recognize opportunities when they come and can discern um, the illusions and the presence of the dweller, um, which is so important to, yeah, just to be able to recognize the difference. Yeah, I would just like to, this is Nancy speaking, I would just like to add a note to that, that it's very important to recognize the difference. Um, but I think we're at a point in time where we need to compensate for the absolute dismissal that anything related to this kingdom is happening in our inner experience because of a fear of glamour. We need to, you know, to bridle that fear, to... Um, face that fear and to realize that once the work has been done with the dweller and once we've met it that, um, and once our motives have been purified and, and we're here to serve and, and there's no more important attention that we have, then we can begin to trust that the impressions that we receive inwardly are going to help us, guide us toward the purpose that we're meant to fulfill. So just just wanted to underscore that and say we need to overcome the fear of land. Thanks, Nancy. Very important. There was a raised hand from uh, Maria Cristina, and I have unmuted uh, Kina. Um, I'm not sure if we can hear you, Maria Cristina. Oh my! <laughs> oh, now, now we do. Yeah. Oh, this is terribly unexpected. I've had my hand up the whole time. <laughs> um, I was just actually writing uh, you, saying what a wonderful affirmation I heard today's presenters. Thank you, Sasha. In any case, many of us are on the same cutting edge of the next step ahead. I was recently asked to share on the topic how can the global group prepare the way for the reappearance of the Christ? And the first quote is from Dinah, right doing is the result of being. If your awareness of being a personality nature, so will be your activity. If your consciousness is focused in spiritual being, your spontaneous service will be consequently by radiation. So you can see how this just uh, dovetails in perfectly with today's conversation. And I know there's not much time, so I would just share with you the very ending, the very last. At this time of the Gemini Solar Festival, we sound the words of the great invocation, reverberating with the chorus being focalized by Christ, the Lord Maitreya. We work invocatively with the divine circulatory flow. We work evocatively through radiation, transforming the underlying etheric grid of our physical worlds, enlivening the work of the new group of world servers Create, contributing to the creation of the pathway of light for the reappearance of the Christ. Forgetting the things which lie behind, these words will resonate with most of you. We strive towards our higher spiritual possibilities. We dedicate ourselves anew to the work of the coming one and will all, do all we can to prepare men's minds and hearts for that event. An event of redemptive love. We have no other life intention. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Christina. Is there anyone in the wider group who would like to share?
Uh, I will unmute Christine. Hello, everyone. Hi, Christine. Just, uh, hi. I just uh, contemplating the question, you know, around how um, do we, what do we do that is practical and it just, you know, I guess coming back to Dot's words around um, let us act as if we are in telepathic rapport with the ashram witnessing the presence in every moment and so for me on a practical level um, you know again looking at the three principles that Dot shared around personal responsibility you know being uh, present in each moment and, and asking the question how in this moment can I place myself um, in service to the hierarchy and how in this moment um, do I allow the forces of light and love to pour forth into the world and um, radiate through my being as a server and uh, you know I hold this image in my mind of um, the etheric web you know being that kind of fine weave of silk fibers that links us to one another and to all living things and you know in those moments where I feel overwhelmed by the glamours that come from our uh, little personality I um, I invoke um, the forces of light and love through the, the group cauldron and and I think Claire the comment you made um, the little mantra that you use around the soul you know on the level of the soul I hold you in my heart and for me I I, um, I ask to be held to be held by the group whilst I act in this way and I think we've got so many opportunities to um, uh, practically apply these principles in every moment of our life by asking the question how in this moment can I apply these principles and when we place ourselves in service to the group and step outside of what is in this for me to what is in this for humanity um, you can't help but have more love so that's all I just felt to share that thank you Christina it brings us back to um, the idea of reciprocity that came up um, earlier during our conference and and the collaborative cooperative nature of this work that we really um, we need to do our own individual work and take responsibility for that but but so that we can be in greater service to humanity and I love what you said about um, asking to be held by the group soul um, it's a way that we can be very uh, supportive etherically and telepathically um, of each other because um, there are moments when it can feel challenging and lonesome and um, a little a little whelming <laughs> I like the word whelming rather than overwhelming but to be able to call on each other and um, know that there's a group container that's holding us all together um, is vital I think for the efficacy of our individual and group work so thank you for sharing that could I could I just say one thing about that what you just said Claire which is I believe that what we need to do is to expand our idea of group from horizontal group expansion to include vertical group and expansion so that we're finding refuge in the group horizontally we're no longer a separative individual and we're supported by the groups we're working with and by other groups that we're working with in the world but when we can also shift our identity to the inner plane group the ashram that is approaching the outer plane the ashram is as present with us then our group identity expansion involves not only a horizontal expansion but a vertical expansion and we act as 
or as if we were a part of the ashram, that we were and are agents of this central life, energy, love, light, and power. So I'm just holding up the idea of a vertical expansion of group identity, as well as a horizontal expansion of group identity. And I think that can be extremely empowering and bring us into the livingness that I was mentioning. Thanks for adding that. I absolutely agree. And it's, it's, it can be expanded even further to include the inner and the outer. Um, and all kingdoms of nature and all the invisible holy ones with whom we work. You know, it's, it's, it's actually a very um, dynamic and vast network and, uh, and at the same time very intimate. So, yes, <laughs> absolutely concur with what you say. Thank you. I've unmuted several people who um, raised their hands, so you have to unmute yourself and speak. There are three people unmuted now. Oh, uh, it's Katja. Uh, thank you for unmuting. To, to the point that was mentioned earlier, the idea of responsibility, you know, every time I, we hear, I hear this word, it sounds like take a burden, you know, take responsibility. But um, it is actually, if you look at the word, it is ability to respond. And I think if we develop that and the woman develop that, also through that vertical alignment that Martin and Claire were talking about, the easier it will be to serve because the prerequisite of the service as Tibetan says that disciple is polarized above the diaphragm so the heart is open and integrating and the ability to respond is there thank you thank you Katya Hi, this is Jose. Can you hear me? Hello, Jose. Yes. Uh, taking refuge in the livingness of the group, I would like to uh, share with you a, a reflection, uh, and I would like you us to consider the sunflower as a symbol of telepathy, the science of impression, reaction to impact, and. Uh, we may find it to be a powerful symbol of the precipitation of the sunlight on Earth happening every day, every second, in that uh, etheric electric process we call photosynthesis. So I just wanted to share that symbol that is coming very powerfully in my mind during this uh, full moon period. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. It's good to hear your voice. May I add a word if nobody else is waiting in the queue, Sasha? Is there somebody else? Uh, there is Brett. Okay, okay I'll wait. You. I'll be brief, Nancy. Thank you. Oh, don't, don't wait, Brett. <laughs> Speak. Okay. So I was oh, thinking yeah. before about um, all the television, especially the, the radio waves that are flowing through our atmosphere all the time. And if we have a device, we can tune into a frequency or a station. And that's um, you know, an analogy for our telepathic uh, response that is, is possible. Um, the information, you know, the, the thoughts, the ideas are all out there or in in there all the time but we are mostly paying attention to all kinds of external things and by external I also mean our thoughts our feelings our, our bodily sensations so in a sense it's a really about attention and the less that we pay attention to the non-necessities the more we are able to 
sense our telepathic impressions. And thinking about what Martin said about the heart, as, as love is the great magnetic attractive force, being centered there is a great way to start because that connect, connects us to each other and to the group and allows uh, more of an opportunity to receive the telepathic impressions. And one of my favorite sentences um, from the books, rest not above all from your meditation work. Keep the inner link, think truth at all times. So trying to practice that and what is referred to in Agni Yoga as constant vigilance helps us be able to uh, attune to what's already happening inwardly. Thank you, Brett. Um, yeah, just to affirm that I hear you saying is the importance of receptivity and availability, um, which requires us to create space in our lives from the distractions and um, to, to stay present to, to that etheric field and to each other through that mode of communication. Again, the vertical horizontal alignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just aware also of the timing and need to just check in with Alexander. We added allowed 20 minutes for this integration process and um, Dot will lead us in a, in a meditation um, after this. Um, is there anyone else with a hand raised, Alexander, or do you think now would be a good time to move into our meditation? I think at the moment, everyone who had their hands raised, they already spoken. This is an ongoing conversation, so we will just maybe see this as a punctuation mark in a longer sentence and <laughs> to be continued. Um, we would also welcome any feedback from you after the conference if you'd like to um, share any thoughts or um, questions. Um, you're welcome to email the 2025 initiative, um, there'll be an email link at the end of the conference um, on one of the, the slides for follow-up. So I, I think... Could, uh, uh, Nancy mm -hmm. wanted to add something. Nancy? Oh, right, Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. I'm not sure that this is the right time to add it because it's really the beginning of, of another discussion possibly, but it seems to me that we are on the leading edge of, of a new stage together um, as a group. And so many of the things that we've touched on can be processed um, so well in small groups. Even the, even the recognition of who we are as souls, starting with that, recognizing each other as souls, reinforcing that identity. And so many things that spring from that um, can be so usefully dealt with in small groups. Um, I just wanted to add that from my own experience in a group, it's been enormously um, expanding and accelerating in terms of reinforcing that essential self, who we really are. And that seems like perhaps the most important work that we can do right now, because we're seeing it, we're sensing the next step. Um, then to bring it about, to manifest it, is, um, can be done so nicely through discipleship groups, soul groups, where there's a common purpose. Yes, it's. Um, I think what what um, what I hear you saying is that, that, that you know, we're we're coming to the close of this conference, but we're coming to the beginning of a new chapter in our work together. And um, thank you for articulating that. Um, it's something that we can all take away with us to uh, ponder and um, and then perhaps come back to each other on that in ways in which we can expand and refine uh, the, the work that we do together in groups. Thanks, Nancy. You're welcome. So um, I think we'll move now into our meditation dot, if um, you would like to guide us. That would be wonderful. 
Thank you, Claire. Thank you, everybody, for your contributions. Throughout the meditation, you will see pictures and text on your screen. Uh, this is intentional for the ease of full participation. We align and experience group unity as we gently reflect on three slokas from Agni Yoga. Let us accept love as the impetus for the expansion of consciousness. Love each other. Beware of disunion. The heart filled to the brim with love will be active, valiant, and will expand to its capacity. Such a heart can pray without words and bathe in bliss. How greatly in need is humanity of the realization of the fire of love. In silence and with joy, we unite our fiery hearts across distance. And we affirm group unity as we sound together the mantra of fusion. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love of my soul pour forth to them. May the strength that is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. Together and as a group, we enter the sacred mountain Kachinjunga, where we stand in the fire of love with open group heart, preparing to receive the blessing of the Christ for distribution, open to the extraplanetary energies. Meditation. I recognize my other self, and in the waning of that self, 
I grow and glow.
we gently refocus our group mind and sound together and as a group the affirmation of love. In the center of all love, I stand. From that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Using the power of imagination, we see ourselves distributing the energy gathered as the divine plan continues to unfold in right relationship. And together, we sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh.
Thank you, Josh. Just before we close today, um, Katja is going to share a little about what's coming up next um, in our webinar program. Katja, are you there? Oh, yes, I'm here. So, using the energies of Gemini, that we speak in, at the stand-in at the moment. Hold on a second, I'll just have to shift to another mic. Well, thank you for your patience. So we're standing in the energy of Gemini which is told, as told us by Tibetan, is a third point in any opposition. It's a source of solving and allowing the energy of opposite points to flow. So using that energy, we will, I will tell you about the events that are going to be unfolding during this year. And we'll, I invite you to make a triangles of those opposite with the energy of Gemini. So in Cancer, we're going to have um, the seed group of psychologists presented by Kenneth Sorensen. And in Capricorn, Religious workers, Helena Bach and Sheldon Hume. So we visualize this energy of Cancer and Capricorn, balanced by the energy of Gemini. Enhancing the upcoming webinars and the work of those groups. Next, Leo, creative workers, Heidi Robbins, Aquarius, the scientific servers, Jose Becerra, Gemini, Virgo, Magnetic Healers, Philip Lindsay, Pisces, Telepathic Communicators, Kathy Newborn, Gemini, Libra, Economists and Financiers, Michael Linfield, Areas of next year. The upcoming energy of areas in Gemini. Scorpio, trained observers. And next year, they suck. They suck of year 2019. Gemini. Thank you. And Sagittarius, educators of the new age, Rudolf and Alice Schneider, 
Gemini of next year and Pisces. We're returning to the hot center of the group and continue our work. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. So we come to the close of our time together. We've um, covered so much ground together today, um, listening into each other and also to the notes of our many different nations. I think we'll leave today with much still to ponder and process. Before we say goodbye, we entrust the conversations we've shared today to the alchemy and the integrity of the group heart. May love and goodwill continue to brighten, inspire and transform us, strengthening our connections and clarifying and refining the energy and focus of our ongoing work together with all that this will give and all that this will ask of us too. So we want to thank you all for your participation today. May we stand in the courage and the wisdom of the heart. May we listen with the ear of the heart. And may love be our guiding light. We'll close by sounding together the mantra of unification. The sons of men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve and not exact due service. I seek to heal, not hurt. Let pain bring due reward of light and love. Let the soul control the outer form and life and all events and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings of the time. Let vision come and insight. Let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail. Let all men love. Blessings to you all and we wish you well on your way and look forward to meeting again at our future meet at our future gatherings. Thank you.